welcome so in the course we are going to start uh, with looking at fluid uh, fluid statics as i said uh, when flow flu when fluids are stationary not moving what kind of forces act on them and what are the applications and what are the what is the importance of uh, all these uh, situations uh, but first let us begin by looking at the little bit more about uh, the detailed contents of the syllabus so uh, here is the contents of the syllabus we are going to start with fluid statics and their applications then we are going to look at macroscopic moment imbalances i remember something i told you about but as we go along this will become more and more clear <clears throat> then we'll look at um, bernoulli equation and uh, applications of uh, bernoulli equation and uh, once we uh, look at that essentially we are going to look at uh, a lot on flow through pipes that's what we encounter commonly uh, then we are going to look at fluid moving machinery such as pumps blowers compressors and so on and so forth they are required to make that fluid move through different pipes then we are going to look at flow past immersed object what we mean by immersed objects is that uh, fluid is flowing around the object and what kind of forces act on that object say for example aeroplane when an aeroplane is flying it is same as as if the aeroplane is stationary and air is moving around uh, moving around that aeroplane or if you have a let's say a cricket ball uh, that cricket ball is thrown uh, uh, by the bowler or hit by a batsman and then the forces acting on that ball is can be uh, calculated in the same way as if the ball is stationary and air is moving around that ball at some uh, speed or the uh, or the uh, or if people are uh, interested in uh, football then uh, when a, a person kicks the football how the uh, how the ball curves and then all those kinds of uh, all those kinds of applications are uh, related to flow past immersed objects sometimes this pressure uh, drop or flow in pipes and fittings sometimes these are called as internal flows because the flow is inside the pipe whereas sometimes this uh, flow past immersed object is also called as external flows so where the flow is outside the object so these section 2 3 4 5 they deal with fluid uh, um, uh, they deal with macroscopic uh, balances and then we are going to switch over to microscopic balances trying to look at at a small scale phenomena what is happening at a local level not just at the global level of the object of the uh, object under consideration but at a local level even within that object or even around that object at a macroscopic level at a microscopic level at a small scale uh, what is happening uh, to the flow and what forces are acting on 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 the on the object we will cover very briefly basics of turbulent flow then we'll start looking at heat and mass transfer again in a macroscopic sense and in a microscopic sense so these are the things that uh, uh, we are going to do in the course and uh, as we go along you will see many many applications many many problems uh, so the way to view these uh, lectures is to have a pen and a piece of paper ready or a pen or a notebook ready and a calculator most importantly a calculator uh, ready and uh, once you have that uh, whatever you see in the video make notes of that there will be problems in the video so when problems are there in the video uh, good idea to pause the video i will also keep on telling when to pause and 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 solve the problem so essentially pause the video solve the problem uh, for yourself uh, try it by yourself uh, even if you don't get it at first attempt that's okay uh, try harder go back to previous videos see the theory lecture go back to the textbook read a little bit more uh, solve the problem yourself if you are not able to solve discuss with your friends and um, uh, classmates uh, still if you have doubts you can then go to the Uh, further part of the video so even if let's say for example this video is about um, half an hour it should take you about a uh, couple of hours to actually solve the problem read the material and so on so forth so for example if there are about uh, there are supposed to be 60 lectures in this uh, in this course um, including uh, theory as well as tutorials so we would be having um, uh, videos 
about 30 hours or, or 20 to 30 hours uh, or so because it will take you when you solve the problem it will take you much longer than uh, what the video uh, duration is so um, if we uh, start looking at uh, fluid statics now and uh, one of the things that we are uh, going to do uh, is to look at what is meant by fluid statics and where are uh, the applications so just to uh, start by revising what you saw in the first lecture, uh, just try to write some points related to when will the flow be laminar or turbulent. You can go back to the previous video and see for yourself and then answer these questions as well. But it is meant for a, a revision so that you are prepared for uh, receiving material in this video. Uh, then what are some of the characteristics of laminar flow? What are the characteristics of uh, turbulent flow? Uh, what are the some of the flow visualization techniques that you saw in the previous lecture, how you could visualize the flow, how the streamlines and uh, so on and so forth. Uh, why do you think, this is a very important question, why do you think some fluids don't behave like water? So we saw that video on people walking on water. And so some fluids don't behave like water. I'm asking in this, uh, in this question is, why do you think they don't behave like water? Be, uh, Try to find out answer for yourself, but even if you are not able to fully find the answer, that's okay. Um, last point is uh, name some of the important considerations for transporting fluids. Remember the problem that we said, I want to try take out, take water from ground floor to the top floor. What are the ways in which we can do and what important considerations do I have to um, take into account? And these are the considerations that we will be looking at throughout this uh, throughout this course. Uh, so just to get you started, uh, some basic concepts about pressure. Uh, remember when you were doing in 11th standard kinetic theory of gases, you talked about molecules of the gas being point forces, point masses and traveling at a random velocity, RMS velocity dependent on temperature. And when these molecules collide uh, with the walls of the container, uh, that is what you. Uh, uh, that is how you get pressure, and you have derived equations uh, for that. Uh, second important point is pressure force is isotropic. Isotropic. The word isotropic means that it is the same in all directions. So if I am uh, looking at, let's say, um, uh, a, a, any point, uh, what is the uh, pressure force in different directions? So the pressure force in different directions uh, will be the same. That's the meaning of uh, isotropic. So if I take uh, a point and then pressure force acting in this, in, in, in this direction or in this direction or in this direction or in this direction, the pressure force in all direction at a particular point is the same. That's the meaning of uh, uh, isotropicity. That's the meaning of isotropic nature of the, of the flow of the pressure. Uh, second important point is arising out of the isotropic nature, pressure force is perpendicular to the surface. So for example, uh, if I take uh, if I if I take a, a plane, let's say this is the plane, then pressure force acting on the plane is perpendicular to the plane. Right? So that is the meaning of pressure, force in the direction perpendicular uh, to the to the to the plate and you did that when you were doing in 11th standard kinetic uh, theory of uh, of gases so um, next thing uh, that i would like to remind you that pressure in a fluid at a horizontal level is the same so if you take a fluid uh, let's say this is a beaker this contains fluid so at one horizontal level pressure would be the same at some horizontal level right? that's because it's a gravitational force acting due to um, the head of water above it uh, recall some of the units of pressure we have been using units of pressure in terms of atmosphere bar pascal mmhg and so on so forth si unit of course is is pascal and uh, bar is 10 raised to 5 pascal so, but sometimes in atmospheric uh, conditions uh, when we are dealing with atmosphere we write pressure in terms of one atmosphere absolute as the pressure at sea level. Uh, then we also talked about gauge pressure and absolute pressure. So absolute pressure 
is the uh, absolute value of the pressure whereas gauge pressure would mean the actual value of pressure absolute value of pressure minus one atmosphere because that's the pressure that is uh, that is there around us uh, all the time the next important basic concept that i would like to remind you is that fluids flow when there is a difference of pressure so even uh, places even 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 uh, flows like uh, atmospheric flows wind so whenever there is a let's say uh, high pressure is there on the sea because it's a, the sea uh, is cooler whereas land gets hotter during the day the pressure uh, local pressure in the land is lower and uh, that in the sea is higher and that's what leads rise that's what gives rise to flow of wind from sea to land and some of these forces that's what we are uh, seeing uh, these days that this pressure force brings up uh, the the pressure force causes wind and these winds carry moisture and that's what causes monsoon and things like that so uh, for flow to happen we require a difference of pressure and sometimes the pressure difference could be because of gravity as well so we are talking going to talk about pressure we are going to talk about gravity and uh, that gives rises to the next concept that the law of fluid static so imagine that there is a container here this container is filled with uh, liquid let's take a small element now when we say small element what we mean is control volume so if this blue thing is our control volume we are going to write pressure force on this blue control volume uh, arising out of the pressure of the fluid above and pressure of the fluid below now we are going to take the z direction as uh, vertically upwards so z is equal to 0 here so z is 0 here and z increases in this direction that's why we are writing z here and z plus delta dz or delta z here now if that is the case now we can write forces on this control volume on this blue dark blue fluid element so if you write downward force downward force would be p plus dp multiplied by cross sectional area of this uh, of this plane okay plus the next downward force would be because of the mass of the fluid in this control volume so that mass would be volume of that control volume volume of that control volume would be a multiplied by dz multiplied by rho will give us density multiplied by rho density will give us the mass so this rho a dz that's going to give us the mass in the control volume and then mass multiplied by g gravitational force gravitational acceleration is going to tell us the uh, acceleration is going to tell us the downward force because of the mass so this downward force is because of the mass of the fluid inside this control volume that's this force gravity so i would write this as m multiplied by g okay now pressure force in the upward direction is because of the pressure exerted by the fluid below this now now look at this again this pressure force is perpendicular to this surface this pressure force is perpendicular to this surface right so what um, uh, so so um, and if we are talking about the pressure forces acting on this control volume we are going to take pressure force acting on this control volume that's why this arrow is downwards that's why this arrow is upwards so the upward force would be pressure multiplied by cross sectional area of that uh, of that plane so cross sectional area of that of that plane now if the fluid is stationary that means there is no net force on the fluid so if that is the case we can equate these two and once you equate these two you can rearrange and you will find that dp is minus rho g dz so this has happened that minus sign has come about minus sign has come about because we are taking z upwards whereas gravitational force is downwards so the gravitational force is opposite to z that's how that negative sign has come and if you would like to think in terms of mathematics in terms of derivatives if you talk about z on this axis versus p as z goes up p goes down so this dp by dz has that negative slope okay 
so uh, just to give you an example so if the pressure at the top of this liquid surface uh, is one atmosphere then the pressure at the bottom would be one atmosphere plus this hydrostatic head so if, for example if water depth is 10 meter pressure due to hydrostatic head of water is 10 multiplied by 1000 multiplied by 9.81 that would be 98100 newton per meter square almost equal to one bar so 10 meters of water column is going to be equal to uh, one um, one bar almost and pressure force uh, and pressure is measured so pressure could even be made so that's how we measure pressure in terms of height of water column or in case of barometers when we want to talk about atmospheric pressure and things like that we measure uh, or we report pressure not in terms of units of pascal or newton per meter square but we write report in terms of mm he so that's the uh, analogy of uh, that's how the uh, we are reporting in terms of the height but it is going to tell us that h height multiplied by rho multiplied by g that's going to be equal to the pressure at the bottom and remember one more thing that if we are talking about the net force on this whole of water or net force on this particular bottom portion of the uh, of the beaker if you like the atmospheric pressure is there on the surface atmospheric pressure is there on this surface everywhere Atmospheric pressure is here on this surface everywhere. Atmospheric pressure is there on this surface also from the bottom. So the net force, so even if there is no water in this, this beaker is stationary because the atmospheric pressure or atmos force due to atmospheric pressure cancels across the whole of this uh, of this beaker and therefore the beaker is stationary. So if you are talking about the bottom of the vessel, the net force is only due to the hydrostatic head that's equal to height of this water into rho into g atmospheric pressure just cancelling out throughout okay. so if we are talking about forces on submerged surface so let's say there is a water now these kinds of things become important when we are talking about uh, large quantities of water being stored say for example dams or uh, sluice gates which are used to control flow of water or important for ships which uh, a large portion of that ship is below the uh, surface of the of the of the sea or submarines which dive completely uh, inside the uh, inside the sea or there is a diver that is going down so for example uh, what i'm trying to say is that course there is a sea here and water is everywhere now if we write take a differential element which means a control volume of uh, height dz now remember this z is zero here z is equal to h here now we are taking z positive in this direction so z and g are in the same direction that means pressure will increase with respect to z that's why if you take uh, dp by dz then so this should be dz not dp. yeah sorry so dp at this location yeah at this location so pressure is going to increase with z pressure is going to increase with z that's why there is no negative sign here so if you find out pressure at this location okay so this d should not be here just rub that pressure at this location would be rho g z again atmospheric pressure is going to cancel out throughout so pressure force at this location is only rho g z so differential element if we take dz the differential force on this element would be rho g z pressure multiplied by area of this plane area of this of this differential element area of the differential element would be w multiplied by dz so the total force acting on this plate total force acting on this plate would be integral of this force df with respect to dz from 0 to h so all i have to do is the total force would be so 0 to f total and this would have to be integrated from 0 to h so that will give us the total force as rho g w and h square by 2 so that's the total force because the pressure force is increasing with depth increasing with depth you see pressure force here is small because of this depth 
pressure force is here is large because of this depth so it's like if you want its area under this curve that's the meaning of integration that's how you get rho g w h square by 2 now we can define a quantity called as center of pressure so center of pressure would be a weighted average of this force so i i if i the, if i would take weighted average it would be integral of z df from 0 to f total that is we are integrating with respect to df and df 0 to f total so in short if i replace this in terms of uh, in terms of dz you would have to integrate this from 0 to h and this also from 0 to h so if you integrate that you will find that the center of pressure is 2 by 3 h that means center of pressure is two thirds way down so this point let's say is our two thirds way down that's called as center of pressure now when we are talking about ships and submarines the concept of center of pressure is very important because that this point center the center of pressure is a point or a, or a line through which the whole pressure force is acting now when you say whole pressure force is that means like center of gravity or center of mass <coughs> it's a arbitrary point or it's a point through which the whole mass is acting or whole weight is acting so that's the meaning of this center of pressure it's a point through which whole pressure force is acting so it's an important consideration that governs the stability of floating floating objects like ships now another point that uh, we would like to talk about is uh, buoyancy so if you think about um, if you think about a fluid imagine this block imagine that there is a block here and this block is let's say having a different density than the fluid around it now the fluid around it will exert a pressure force these are shown by these arrows so pressure force at this location is p1 pressure force at this location is p2 obviously p2 is more than p1 now again uh, z is uh, positive uh, in this direction so uh, pressure force acting on this part would be in this direction pressure force acting on this part would be in this direction so in the horizontal direction the pressure force due to these pressures or, or at these locations and pressure force due to these locations they will just cancel out so the net force in the horizontal direction would be uh, would be zero now if you think about vertical direction pressure force would be p1 multiplied by a area of cross section here area of cross section here that would be delta x multiplied by the uh, bottom uh, portion uh, right so this uh, multiplied by the width in the plane of the of the of the screen if you like and pressure force in the bottom plane would be p2 multiplied by this area so this area would be delta x multiplied by that w uh, multiplied by that width in the screen uh, in in the per direction perpendicular to the screen so the vertical uh, direction pressure uh, force would be this pressure is higher than this pressure therefore there will be a net vertical force because of pressure in the upward direction so that net pressure force is p2 minus p1 multiplied by a this is the net pressure this is not the net pressure for this is the not the net force this is the pressure force only or uh, uh, besides this there is a weight that is acting w okay so we are not considering that we are only considering forces due to pressure of liquid so the force due to pressure of the liquid in the vertical direction would be p2 minus p1 multiplied by a in the upward direction now p2 minus p1 i can write from uh, fluid statics law of fluid statics p2 minus p1 would be delta z multiplied by this rho of liquid the surrounding liquid so this surrounding liquid has a density rho l multiplied by g multiplied by a now i can combine this a and delta z that will give us the volume of that object and volume of that object is nothing about nothing but volume of the displaced fluid so the upward force due to pressure is nothing but volume of the displaced fluid <coughs> multiplied by density of this liquid multiplied by g this is what we call as buoyancy force or buoyant force remember our uh, archimedes example 
so archimedes uh, was the one who was uh, looking at the buoyancy and will be a problem later on so the buoyant force is nothing else but a resultant pressure force it is due to pressure and it is due to hydrostatic head so they are the same whether we take pressure force separately or whether we write in terms of the buoyant force buoyancy force acting on this object it is one and the same we don't have to account uh, for pressure and buoyancy separately they are the same so let's take a small problem so imagine that there is a cylindrical wooden block diameter is 9 cm and height is 11 cm it floats in water with this 3 cm portion remaining above the water i would like you to find the density of this wooden block okay so now is the time to pause the video do this problem yourself and then only go forward again if you are stuck ask classmates read books uh, see google wikipedia all kinds of things but try to solve this problem yourself and once you have solved then only go ahead that's why i'm saying the duration of this video and the duration that you will need to study will be much more the duration that you will need to study will be typically two or three times the duration of this video okay so here is the answer so if you took look at the gravitational force on this object gravitational force would be in the downward direction so this gravitational force is in the downward direction gravitational force would be volume of that wooden block pi by 4 multiplied by diameter square multiplied by h multiplied by density of the block multiplied by g that's the gravitational force the buoyant force act upward would be the volume of displaced water into rho of water into g and since the block is floating it is not moving it is neither going down nor going up it is uh, floating at this location that means net force must be zero and if net force is zero then the gravitational force must exactly balance the buoyancy force acting on this wooden block so now i can write for gravitational force buoyancy force would be now i can write in terms of the volume of the object but now volume of the object that is displacing the water that is what is responsible for buoyancy so it is only pi by 4 multiplied by d square multiplied by the submerged portion submerged portion of this block that is what is displacing the water that is what is causing the buoyancy only this part multiplied by rho w multiplied by g so i can cancel out this pi by 4 d square i can cancel out this pi by 4 d square i can cancel out g and then rho of block would just be equal to submerged portion divided by the total height multiplied by rho w you will find that the density of the block is 727.3 and then there is a uh um, story behind this that uh, archimedes was asked by the king then to find out if the crown made was of pure gold so the legend is we don't know whether it is true but the legend is that uh, he dipped this crown in water measured the displaced water so measured the volume of the crown measured the uh, using this method measured the density of the of the crown and compared with that a gold block and then he could figure out whether the uh, crown is really made of pure gold or not and then that's how we uh, recognize the value of uh, archimedes okay so the next application that we are going to look at is a manometer so for example imagine that there is a pipe here and water is flowing in this pipe it can be water it can be some other fluid so water is flowing in this pipe now i told you that in order to make the water flow i need to have pressure difference between the two ends of the pipe so p1 has to be larger than p2 okay only then water will flow from left to right either in terms of pressure or this pipe could be vertical or pipe could be inclined and then this location could be at a higher elevation than this location p2 than this location 2 okay now one of the ways in which we measure this pressure difference so we are interested in measuring the pressure difference is called as differential pressure and one of the ways in which we measure this pressure differential is by connecting a manometer now manometer is like a glass due tube and we fill this manometer with some liquid let's say mercury in this particular case 
let's say mercury in this particular case so this is mercury and we connect this manometer here with these two uh, sort of flexible tubings so now water is flowing here water will be present in this part as well in this part as well so if p1 is higher water is going to force down water is going to cause a higher pressure on the mercury that's going to make this level go down and make this level go up so this is only a schematic this level and this level is not the same it will obviously be lower so it's only a schematic don't say that this level and this level is the same and my pressure here is lower so as if this water is is pull pushing down the mercury and then that mercury gets lifted up up to here so what we do is we measure the height difference delta h <coughs> between the level of mercury in the two limbs so level of mercury here and level of mercury here delta h now what i would like you to do is use law of fluid statics relate the pressure difference p1 minus p2 to this height difference delta h okay use fluid statics do this yourself pause the video and then only go forward okay so if you think about if you take some horizontal level here if you take a horizontal level here what did we say in our introduction part horizontal level pressures are identical pressures are identical now that means pa must be equal to pb now pa we can write in terms of p1 pa would be p1 plus the height of water in this portion so that would be h plus delta h multiplied by rho of the fluid that is going in this pipe rho of water if you like pressure at b would be now due to hydrostatic head because of this much amount of water plus this much amount of water plus this much amount of mercury so pressure at b would be p2 plus h into rho f into g rho of fluid in the pipe multiplied by delta h multiplied by rho m m either you can say m is mercury or m you say fluid in the manometer into g so if i say now pa and pb are the same then i can equate these and then i will get an expression for the pressure difference in the pipe in terms of the height difference in the manometer limbs and density difference of the manometric fluid and the fluid in the pipe and g so you should have been uh, you should have been able to get this by yourself it's very straight forward okay so for example now if we take delta h is say 50 cm rho f is water 1000 kg per meter cube rho m is mercury 13600 oops 10 more just one second i will correct this yeah so this is corrected now rho of fluid in the manometer mercury 13600 kg per meter cube so this p1 minus p2 would be 0.5 50 cm so 0.5 meters 13600 minus 1000 into 9.81 61803 pascal so like 0.6 bar 0.61 0.62 bar so this pressure driving force is an important aspect determining flow later on we will be able to calculate what is the pressure difference and what kind of flow will occur so this is what i was saying the geometry the pipe how much pressure difference is there 61800 in this particular case and how much flow will go through and if i have a different geometry how much will flow will go through for the same pressure difference or if i want another uh, kind another flow rate what kind of pressure difference will i require so that's the point that i was talking about geometry flow and energy so pressure in, in terms of the, how much energy i need to supply to this fluid to make it go from Uh, one end to the other let's take another example suppose this p1 minus p2 was 10000 pascal what would h what would be the delta h so now this p1 minus p2 is 10000 what would be the value of delta h if p1 minus p2 is 10000 you can get it straight from here okay, do it for yourself so you'll find delta h would be if i get from here delta h would be 
P1 minus P2 divided by rho m minus rho f 13600 minus 1000 divided by g that would be delta h. So delta h would be 0 0.08 meters that is 8 centimeters. Now can I measure this accurately in a, in a, um, in a manometer? How I am going to measure? I am going to measure probably with a scale. Can I measure 8 centimeters accurately with the scale? Yeah, fairly okay, fairly accurately. Suppose P1 minus P2 is 1000 Pascal. What would be delta H? Obviously, delta H is linearly dependent on P1 minus P2. If pressure difference goes down by a factor of 10, this 8 centimeter would reduce by a factor of 10. Delta H would become 8 millimeters. Now, can I measure 8 millimeters accurately? What is my accuracy of measurement? So, if I am using a scale to measure, what is the least count of the scale? 1 millimeter, right? So, if I say that least count is 1 millimeter, accuracy is plus or minus 1 millimeter in 8 millimeters. That means we have made an error of 12.5 percent in the measurement of delta H. 12.5 percent error in the measurement of delta H would would end up into a 12.5 percent delta H would 12.5 percent error in the measurement of delta P. That's a lot. Okay. So that's not a good idea. Now, can you think of some ways to increase accuracy of the manometer for it to measure uh, this uh, 10, 1000 Pascal pressure difference? Pause the video. Think about it yourself. Discuss amongst yourself. Call up your friends. Right? Discuss. Think of ways. Then only go forward. Okay, so one of the ways would be to reduce density difference, rho m minus rho f. Look at this. We had this equation. If I want to measure a low value of P1 minus P2 and keep accuracy of delta H very high, that means delta H should be something like 10 centimeters when accuracy is acceptable. I can reduce either rho m minus rho f into g or I can reduce the g itself. Right? So here are some of the ways in which we do. One would be to reduce this density difference rho m minus rho f. Now rho f is dictated by what is there in the pipe. Let's say my plant is producing toluene, then the fluid in the pipe would be toluene. Now I would need to change the manometric fluid. So, if it is a water that is flowing, I could use instead of mercury which has a density of 13600, we could use chloroform or chlorobenzene which has densities around 1300. So, this rho m minus rho f, this difference if it was mercury and water in the pipe, this difference was 12600. Now, this difference would become only <coughs> 2 or 300, 1200 or 1300 minus 1300. So that's how I have been able to increase the accuracy of the manometer without doing anything, just changing the manometric fluid. Another possibility is to reduce the gravity. How could we do that? Well, you can think of a large number of things, but one of the ways in which we do is make one limb of the manometer inclined. So we take a manometer like this. This is the manometer. And later on there is an example. I will show that as well. And so this angle is our angle theta, angle with respect to horizontal. And we measure, so if, if this is connected to higher pressure P1, the height difference would be water will rise in this inclined limb or mercury will rise in this inclined limb and the height difference will be the same. But I don't measure this height difference now. What we measure is you measure the length along the incline. And that along the incline would be delta H along the incline multiplied by sine theta. This would be equal to the vertical height difference delta H. So we don't measure the vertical height difference. We measure delta H along the incline. So this is delta H, but this is delta H along the incline. And then that's how if I by making theta small, we could make sine theta small and we can increase this delta h that we measure along the incline 
even if for a low pressure difference p1 minus p2 another way in which we do is to use a <coughs> two fluid manometer so we don't have a manometer with one single fluid we take manometer with two different fluids this is especially useful if the fluid in the pipeline is air and density of that air is very low let's say 2 to 10 kg per meter cube and even if i use water then the density in the manometer then the density difference between the manometric fluid and the uh, fluid in the pipe is still of the order of 1000 so that still prevents us from measuring delta h accurately if the pressure differences are small so then we use two different fluids in the manometer which have small density difference let's say chloromenzene and water or chloroform and water and then the delta h between them or the delta uh, rho between them is is one or uh, is couple of hundred or so then we can measure the pressure difference in the pipe uh, accurately so homework for you is to derive equations for inclined manometer and two fluid manometer you can use uh, you can read the textbooks you can uh, look at uh, internet and so on and so forth but derive these equations yourself that's the homework for you okay here is a problem uh, related to the uh, uh, manometers this is taken from white's book uh, these are the the books that i told you so we just go back the books that i told you these are the textbooks that we would be using fluid mechanics by frank white transport phenomena by bird stewart and lightfoot and fundamentals of momentum heat and mass transfer by velty wix and uh, these are the authors so uh, use one of these books and uh, try to uh, derive equations for the uh, manometer that i told you about inclined manometer and two fluid manometer so here is a problem so let's say there is a uh, container here that has air under some pressure there is mercury here there is air here there is water here in this part and the height differences uh, height of this mercury here is 15 cm from ground 32 cm from ground height of water here is 18 cm from ground and this is l and this is at an angle of 50, 35 degrees with respect to vertical okay system is open to atmosphere on right side so this is atmospheric pressure l is 120 cm i would like you to find what is the value of pa one hint for you is to neglect the hydrostatic head due to air so the air is here and air is here because air has low density we can neglect the hydrostatic head due to this part whereas hydrostatic head due to mercury or water would be significant so find out the values of a find out the value of pressure at a in this particular situation okay do this problem yourself and once you have done this problem you can go forward and see the solution discuss with friends okay so here is the solution so if this is the uh, this is the sketch mercury is here water is here okay. now we can take different points so this is atmospheric pressure let's say we take this as point number 1 this is point number 2 point number 3 point number 4 point number 5 point number 6 or a is the point here now we can write pressure at 1 using atmospheric pressure plus hydrostatic head due to this much amount of water column that would be 1h 1.2 that is along the incline into this angle is 55 now so the vertical height would be 1.2 meters multiplied by sin 55 1.2 multiplied by sin 55 that would be the vertical height difference h multiplied by rho multiplied by g 9.81 that would be p1 now i can write hydrostatic uh, law of fluid statics here i can write between p1 in terms of p2 so if i do that p2 would be p1 minus the hydrostatic head due to water column here we are neglecting the hydrostatic head due to air here So P2 would be P1 minus 0.18, 18 centimeters into rho of water into g. Now point number two and three are at the same location, level horizontal level. So P3 would be same as P2. P4 
would now be P3 plus the hydrostatic head of mercury here. We are neglecting the hydrostatic head due to water here, uh, due to air here, sorry, hydrostatic head due to air here. This is mercury here. So P4 would be P3 plus 32 centimeters, 0.32 meters, 13,600 density of mercury multiplied by 9.81. Again, P4 and P5 are at the same horizontal level. So P4 and P5 would be identical. And now PA we can write in terms of P5. So PA would be P5 minus the hydrostatic head due to 15 centimeters of mercury. So 0.15 into 13,600 into 9.81. Now we can simplify. PA would be atmospheric pressure plus 30558 Newton per meter square, Pascal if you like. H rho G has units of Pascal. If I take H in meters, rho in kg per meter cube and G in meter per second square. Or if you want to talk in terms of gauge pressure at location A, gauge pressure would be just the pressure at a minus atmospheric pressure. It would just be 30,558 gauge. If you have not got this problem, if you are stuck, again clarify your doubts and, uh, and complete the uh, problem yourself. Some of the applications of fluid static, some more applications. So uh, one of the applications is in hydraulics. Right? You have hydraulic brakes for your car, power steering in your car. right? So hydraulic jack is an example here. So if there is a uh, limb here which has a small diameter, there is a limb here which has a larger diameter and this is supported um, by a piston and this car is let's say standing on this piston. Now if I look at a horizontal level here, pressure is the same. So P1 and P2 would be identical. Right? The force that I need to apply on this P1 on this location 1 would be P1 multiplied by A1 and force that will get transmitted here would be P2 multiplied by A2. Now P1 and P2 are identical. P1 and P2 are the same because they are at the same level. Right? So this P1 and P2 they are the same. So I don't have to call them by differently. They are same. So the force that is generated here is multiplied, amplified by the area ratio A1 and A2. So that's why applying a small force, I am able to lift a large force, say car. So this is what is used in hydraulic jacks. Okay, another example would be a liquid liquid settler. Remember we did something about liquid liquid extraction in our MEBC course. So when we did that, we had this, let's say feed consisting of two uh, fluids, organic fluid and an aqueous fluid. And we would like to separate that so that the organic fluid we can uh, take it uh, forward, aqueous uh, fluid we can take it to the previous mixer and so on and so forth. We call those MEBC lectures related to counter current operation. So way we do that is allow this liquid, allow this two phase mixture to separate into, uh, uh, take this into a, uh, into a vessel and allow it to separate. So the aqueous layer will uh, settle, aqueous being heavier will settle down, organic being lighter will rest on the top. And uh, what we would like to do is we would like to control this level of this interface and the way we are going to do that is by taking part of the aqueous here and we are allowing that aqueous to be taken out at some height here. So now the if I take this level up and down, if I take this limb up and down, the interface I can take up and down. You will see this more clearly when you start doing actual experiments in your uh, second year and third year. Okay. Now, the organic liquid is overflowing here. That means this total height is constant. By changing this ZA2, I am able to change the relative magnitude or relative value of ZA1 and ZB. So what I would like you to do is write a force balance or a pressure balance. So imagine that the liquids are practically stationary here. They are flowing. It's a continuous flow process. Flow is, feed is coming in, liquid is going out, organic liquid is going out, light liquid is going out, heavy liquid, aqueous phase is going out all the time. So it's steady state. But the 
settler is so large that the flows are very very small and if flows are very very small we can consider as if it's practically a fluid static application so the pressure at this location and pressure at this location they are identical because they are at the same horizontal level now write for pressure at this location using this atmospheric pressure plus the hydrostatic head here for this location pressure here atmospheric pressure plus the hydrostatic head here and then rearrange to get an expression for za1 in terms of za2 do this for yourself once you're done you can go forward so here is the expression za1 would be za2 minus zt total height rho b by rho a rho b is density of this fluid rho a is density of this fluid so this is rho a and this is rho b do this for yourself so you should be able to derive this expression yourself okay so that's the end of uh, first so that's the end of first part of our uh, lecture on uh, fluid statics